Good Sunday evening. Here we are in our Old Testament studies, Exodus chapter 30. We're nearing that final chapter, which is 40. We're still in the, uh, the blueprint and pattern stage of how to build the tabernacle and build all the things that go in the tabernacle. And as the New Testament says, the Old Testament is our schoolmaster to teach us things about the new. There's spiritual truths in these things that were just literal back there, but uh, now that we look back on it, God's teaching us spiritual things. So let's, uh, let's work our way through chapter 30 here a little bit. I'm going to build the altar now, the altar of incense. Thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Build it like a lot of the things out of the acacia wood or shittim wood. You'll make it. And here's the dimensions for it. It'll be a cubit with the length and a cubit the breadth. It'll be four square, be square, and it'll be two cubits high, and the horns be the same. And overlay it with pure gold, like a lot of the things involved with the tabernacle, the furniture. The top thereof, the sides thereof, round about, the horns thereof, you make it into a crown of gold round about. And you're going to put two golden rings on it. You, we've seen this before. Remember what the rings are? We'd call them loops, I guess. So we can stick the staves in and carry it. Remember, two golden rings you'll make to it under the crown of it. By the two corners thereof, the two sides you'll make it, and they'll be for places for the staves or poles or sticks to bear it. You can't touch it. It's holy. But when, you, when the tabernacle moves from one place of the desert to the other one, the, the Levites... They each have their job, and some of them's job is to pick that thing up and carry it on the sticks and touch it, but don't touch it. And it's the altar of incense, and here's where it goes when you set the, temp the tabernacle up. You'll put it before the veil, that final curtain, which is in front of the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Testimony, before the mercy seat that's over the testimony where I will meet thee. All right, the tabernacle's teaching us something. Here we are, we're approaching God. The Shekinah glory of God's going to come down and dwell on top of the mercy seat between the cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. And it's on the other side of the veil, he is. And, but here on this side of the veil, we're approaching God, getting closer and closer. We're getting to the, the altar of incense, which the New Testament, especially the book of Revelation, it always equates the incense burning. It's like the prayers of the saints going up to God. So we're approaching God in prayer here. And for God to be approachable, well, it's a good thing he's dwelling on the mercy seat. We can only approach God because he offers mercy to us. And the mercy came because Christ fulfilled what we couldn't and God accepted that. Verse 7, and Aaron, he'll burn there on the sweet incense every morning. Do you wake up and say good morning to God? Do you offer your prayers to God? When he dresses the lamps, he'll burn incense upon it. Then again at evening, when Aaron lights the lamps at evening, he'll burn incense upon it. A perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You know, I guess the, the way the, the world spins and it's morning here and evening in some other part of the world, and you, I hope that there's a perpetual, continual incense of prayer going up to God at all times from the church, don't you? You'll offer no strange incense thereof, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink up offering upon it. It's, uh, God says, keep it simple. Do it my way. That's the way prayer should be. And Aaron shall make an atonement at one, the way it's meant to be. When we've got an atonement, man is at one, the way it's meant to be with God. Aaron, he'll serve as the priest. Remember the high priest, the priest here. And he'll make an atonement upon the horns of once a year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. For, it, for us to have atonement with God involved the death of an innocent sacrifice. The atonement was because something shed its blood, or in our case, in all people's cases, it was a pointing toward the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, Jesus Christ. Because of he died and took God's judgment upon him instead of us, we are having atonement with God. He used to sin offering, Jesus is. The sin offering of atonements. Once a year, he'll make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It's most holy to the Lord. Verse 11. The Lord spake to Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel, or when you count the people, 
God's people, after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom. We hear that word today and somebody's been kidnapped. You can pay a ransom to get them back or it's the price of their life, right? So you can pay a ransom for everybody that's counted. Everybody's going to give an offering. It's called a ransom here. And uh, it's going to be for the upkeep of the tabernacle. It's going to take some money to keep it going. For his soul unto the Lord. When thou numbers them, that there be no plague, God will bless you if you do so. There'll be punishment if you don't so when you number them. This they shall give everyone that passes among them that are numbered. They're going to give half a shekel. What's a half a shekel? It says right here, well, that's tw it's, uh, 20 geras. It's a small sum that's offered to the Lord for the upkeep of the, of the tabernacle. A half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Everyone that passes among them that are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more. The poor shall not give less than this half a shekel. Everybody just had this one customary thing that they did once a year for the upkeep. It's like giving to the building fund, if you would. Everybody give a certain amount, the prescribed amount to the building fund when they give an offering to the Lord to make atonement for your souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tapert of the tabernacle. See, that's the keep it going here of the congregation. Every once in a while, somebody may have to go trade and purchase some new badger skins and things. <laughs> that it may be a memorial to the children of Israel before the Lord to make atonement for your souls. 17, and the Lord spake to Moses saying, you're also going to make a laver or a basin that's built out of brass. And his foot, or the base of the basin, shall be of brass. To wash withal, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And thou shalt put water there. And see, as we approach God, we'll, they're going to be told to wash your hands and wash your feet. Because symbolically, it's like, well, we want to keep our lives clean. And as we approach God, we don't want to approach God in our sins or for the Christian, approaching God clean is uh, that, hey, I'm confessing my sins to Christ. When they go to the tabernacle of the congregation, they'll wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by the fire of the Lord. So they'll wash their hands and their feet that they die not. We can't come into the presence of God with sin in our lives. It had to be dealt with. And it shall be a statute for them for even to him for his seed throughout their generations. 22. Moreover, the Lord spake to Moses, saying, Now we're going to get into a, a recipe section of the Bible here. Take thee also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and sweet cinnamon, half as much, even 250 shekels of sweet calamus to 150 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, in a hen, a certain amount of olive oil. And what you're doing here in verse 25 explains it. You put these together according to the directions given to Moses by God, and you're making a holy ointment, anointing oil, the recipe that God gave them. You'll make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, and it will be a holy anointing oil. Now, if you've got anointing oil, we're going to anoint something, right? So you're going to anoint the tabernacle. Anoint the tabernacle, the structure itself of the congregation. And, and anoint the Ark of the Testimony or the Ark of the Covenant. Anoint the table and the vessels, the candlestick, the vessels, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, all the vessels, and the laver and his base or foot. And you shall sanctify them. So everything is being, it's symbolic, right? The, they're going in there, the priests are, and they're putting this oil on the structure and the basin, the altar, the table, all this stuff we've built because it's symbolic that, hey, this has been set apart for a holy service or sanctified. It's different than anything else that might look like this because this is set apart for the service of God. Now, the anointing oil, I think for us Christians, it represents what God does when we're saved, he, he puts his seal upon us. He anoints us with the Holy Spirit of God. And it's God's way of saying in the spiritual realm that these are my people. They're holy. They're most holy. They're set apart 
for the service of God. They're different than other people. Sanctify them that they'll be most holy. Whatever touches them will be holy. Verse 30. And, of course, you're going to anoint Aaron and his sons to the priesthood. It's a sort of like an ordination service. Or in front of the people, they're being anointed, showing them that, hey, these are going to be the priests that are going to do service in the tabernacle. Anoint Aaron and his sons, because they'll be different than everybody else. They're the ones that God selected to go in there. Consecrate them that they minister to me in the priest office. And thou shalt speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Well, we're going to put it on, Mo, on Aaron and his sons, but I, I think if you read this closely in 32, it means uh, it's not going to be used for any common purpose. Somebody says, hey, that's pretty good. What's your recipe? I want to make that, and it smells good. I want to, he's, no, this is for the service of God. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Neither shall you make any other like it. After the composition of this is a holy recipe. It's holy. And it'll be holy unto you. It's unique. Whosoever compounds any like it, or whosoever puts any of it upon a stranger, shall be cut off from his people. Judgment of God upon them. And the Lord said to Moses, verse 34, another recipe. Now take sweet spices, stacti and anika, and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense of each of a like weight, all the same amount, and pour them on, blend them all together, and make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together pure and holy. And you'll beat some of it very small into fine powder and put it before the testimony in the tabernacle, before the Ark of the Covenant of the congregation, where I will meet with thee. It'll be unto you most holy. In other words, that place right there is where God's going to meet with them. That's a sacred place on earth. And, you know, it's sort of like our sanctuary at church. That's a, it's, 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 a, it's a big room like any other building might have a big room, but we've dedicated it or set it apart to where we worship God. So that's a, a place that God marks as sacred, and, and we do too from our side. And as for the perfume which you'll make, don't make it to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It'll be holy for the Lord. This is a holy use. Don't make this perfume to wear on Friday night or something, right? This is different. And whoever will make like unto that to smell there too must have smelled really good. And people will be tempted to make it just for personal use. And God said, no, this is for the service of God. They'll be cut off from among his people. So we'll pick up there next week, chapter 31 and continue through the book of Exodus. See you next week.